Da -da 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 -da! Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season one, episode 11 of The Hate Napkin. I am your co-host, Eric Bjorn, adorned here in Hawkeye Pierce bathrobe style. Uh, we are joined by pop culture guru and other co-host, Garrett Kellerhall. Say hello, Garrett. Hello, Garrett. <laughs> We're joined by superstar of Burt Corn, Alabama, the manager of the local Ace Hardware and editor of the uh, St. Louis Tribune, Carla. You're never going to get this right, but I'm okay with that. We are sponsored by Regal Prints out of the Midlands, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to start off with one because this, 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 hits, this, this hit hard this week. So what I really hate, I hate, I'm putting this on my hate napkin, novelty postage stamps. Novelty postage stamps. And here's why. So I was at the post office mailing something the other day and I needed a book of stamps. And she said, we've got this kind and this kind. I was like, I don't care. Just give me a book of stamps. So she did. And uh, took the book of stamps home. Um, and then uh, I, somebody that I, I know, their parents died. And I happened to know the parents a little bit. And I needed to go get a condolences card. So I went to the store and I spent, you know, you gotta spend $8 on a card now. No card is less than $8. So I got home and I read out this very long and wonderful letter, but I, it's, it's a little, it's, I'm getting close to the end of when you need to send this letter before it's not etiquette. Like this, I gotta get this thing in the mail right away. So I go to the book of stamps that I got. And <laughs> it's a book of Scooby-Doo stamps. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Scooby-Doo stamps from the USPS to put on a funeral condolences card. <laughs> but I don't really have any, I'm not, okay. I feel bad for these people and they have my condolences, but not enough for me to go back to the post office and wait in line to get flag stamps. So, okay, so, but I, it's not, it's just stupid. Why do we have Scooby-Doo stamps? I gotta put it on a funeral card. I feel stupid, but you know, we just gotta end novelty stamps once and for all. I feel they're going to look at this. I know it's in kind of an inappropriate scoop. Anyway, get rid of the dance. I should have just, just wrote, should have wrote, rut roll, your dad died, rut <laughs> roll. That's how I would have signed it and called it a day. <laughs> See, in burnt corn, we have one kind of stamps at the post office. Tramp? Oh. <laughs> one kind of stamps. That's it, because we're merkin. <laughs> That might be the only stamp in burnt corn. <laughs> Tramp stamps count, but I don't think you can mail those. So anyway, would you propose any particular type of non-novelty stamp that 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 would be good for all occasions? Yeah, because I'm not really into death? the flag either. I'm not into flags either. I'm not a flag guy. Oh, for death? Oh, stamps. Death. Death stamps. <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe maybe a sigh, or. <laughs> 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 what, what is what what is the appropriate stamp to put on a condolences card? I think all American stamps postage. should just say "I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely should. Now that it's going to take three weeks to get there, so I don't like the "I'm sorry." I hate it when someone dies and someone comes up to me and says, "I'm sorry." I'm always like, "You you did this? It was you." <laughs> What'd you do? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I kind of, what is the appropriate, maybe the, I don't know, a Cary Grant stamp? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think most post, don't all postage stamps of people have to be of dead people? Isn't that some rule? Yeah, I, I think it was it. only, yeah, I think that's, I think that is the rule. That it so basically, any, any person stamp, they're dead already. Uh, I don't like novelty <laughs> postage stamps. We're gonna swing it over. Oh, Garrett, let's see. You got a coffee mug there. Let's see the mug. What, what mug? Did you bring your gay mug? Again? I don't know that it count. I don't know that it counts as. Was was it was it novelty? Was it novelty coffee mugs? That yes. You I also don't like novelty okay. postage stamps. Yeah, I, I, there's a theme here. I don't like novelty. <laughs> All right. So All right. So that that novelty okay. store that we got you for Christmas. The flashlight. Return it. Return yeah. that flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> novelty flashlight <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we just bottomed out <laughs> this episode is brought to you by flashlights and realprints.com okay garrett what do you got throw it on the napkin um it actually requires a napkin um 
uh, <laughs> cheese dust, or let's just say, yeah, cheese dust cheese. from Cheesy Poops. Oh, <laughs> Cheetos, hey. Doritos, Cheetos, Doritos. This is one of those things that you know can uh, can easily just cover a surface and be impossible right. to uh, get rid of. And I uh, don't know what chemicals exactly, because they say they put all the ingredients on there, but there's no way that they're putting all of these ingredients on uh, the packages that make these things so impossible to, to remove. Have you ever noticed that if you get enough cheese dust on your fingers, they start to burn? Burn? Yeah. 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 Like, so this is not cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I cover my face in brie, I do not start to burn. <laughs> it's a concentration of chemicals that that is right. That you you're feeling the effect. Yeah, I know, but it's it's you know it's it's uh, it's like DEET. <laughs> I mean, it's I why do I have a feeling that if you were to analyze cheese dust, it would it would be highly toxic. Very well, could be, well could like, be you, it could be used to it could be used to like to clean grills and ovens. Dust. You know what? I, I don't think there's a lot of debate here. Nobody likes cheese dust. It burns the fingers. Um, <laughs> it, it gets in crevices. It's kind of like you remember uh, early episode sand, sand at the beach. Cheese dust is the equivalent of sand at the beach in the house interior. All right, I like that cheese dust. You got another one for us, G man? Uh, not currently. Let me continue to to dwell on how much uh, hate I have. <laughs> And then we'll shoot it over to Carla from Burn Corn. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been weeding out my friends list. <laughs> my real life friends list. Not the one on social media. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have one friend, former friend in particular, who always wanted to go out. Always wanted to go out. And inevitably never seemed to remember to take his wallet. Oh. And I ended up footing the bill for everything. And it's like, look, I do not mind treating people once in a while, but people who use me as their entertainment fund, um, not happening. I mean, how many times can you forget your wallet? Or when he finally does remember his wallet, um, he wants to split the bill and then he wants to argue that what I had was more expensive than what he had. Look, this whole dining out thing between skinny women who complain that they're so fat and won't eat their food but want to eat mine and <laughs> other people's children running around and the cheap shitheads that I managed to go out with, I'm kind of okay with eating at home. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch out for the cheese dust. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. There are any snacks in the house or they magically disappear. And Cletus has no idea where they went. You know, you, Holly, you better have something good that you hate. Well, I don't know that it's good. It's just something I hate. It's uh, people who set their alarm and then don't get up and they ride that snooze button for Ooh. five times. You, They're destroying their own circadian rhythm you wouldn't even need an alarm. It would be better for your health and you would get up fresh and feeling good. But so I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the snooze button that I hate. The snooze feature <laughs> should go. You see here in Burnt I don't want to attack people. The circadians <laughs> only hatch every 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to get into a rhythm when you only hatch every 17 years. I, I feel for the I feel for you folks. <laughs> I, I, riding this news button, you know what's funny? Do, am I the only person that has the same radio alarm clock that I've had since like high school? I, I, it's yes. it's lasted twenty five years. It just sits there and it works. And so why should I replace it? But of all things, last night it went off for the spontaneously for the first time in twenty five years. I'm like. Why do I hear voices? Who's in the room? Hmm. It's, it's my radio alarm clock. It's gone off for the first time in 25 years. So I snoozed it. 
It's the first time you didn't drunk sleep through it. That's all. I had <laughs> first time. <laughs> it's, it's been going off for 20 years. Yeah, my name is Eric. I am a co-host. Um, no, but I, it was funny that muscle memory all these years, I knew exactly. I hadn't touched the thing in 25 years. Um, kind of like my Kind of like my dating life. And I knew exactly, without even opening my eyes, how to snooze it. It just came right back. Boom, on the snooze. So, Gary, how, what do you? What's your opinion on writing the snooze? Oh, the, it's it's even funnier observation about the snooze button when you live with someone, and either you really like the snooze button or they really hate the snooze button, and when those two worlds collide. Uh, it, it makes it makes for a very entertaining argument to start the day because I was a I, I loved using the snooze button. You're a snoozer, and, uh, yeah, I was a snoozer. But uh, don't try to sleep next to someone that can't stand the snooze button because now I don't use an alarm at all. I'm at this point. Isn't it better though? Isn't it better? We got boozers and snoozers. It's, which is better? Yeah, it's exactly. So at this point, it's just yeah. Uh, no alarm clock, no snooze button to worry about. It is better. I, I'm I'm in full agreement with you. The, you the mean snooze button well, is... Then again, you have two young kids, so you have an alarm clock. It's just exactly. not electronic. They're not it's electronic. Not electronic. They're, they're, yeah. You have you have yeah. an or, you have an organic alarm clock for now. Yeah. Wait, and but wait till they're the... thirteen. Like wait wait till they're thirteen. Like <laughs> mine, the, the alarm clock will go off at two p.m. every day. Well, you can still hit them. <laughs> you can still hit them, and they'll shut up in yeah. ten minutes. But only, yeah, for, yeah, but only for eight minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay, so I think for this one, you can put both sides of the snooze coin on the napkin. There are people who love this. You're either a snoozer or you're not a snoozer, but nobody, nobody feels ambivalent about it. You either hate the snooze or you love the snooze. You're on, you're, you, it's, it's, and, 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 Garrett, I, I know a good uh, marriage counselor I can recommend. <laughs> All right. Send her, send him, send him my way. All right. I got another one for you. Let's see. What kind of time are we working with today? As I look, remember, well, we got tons of time. Uh, remember, we are sponsored by regalprints.com. That's regalprints.com for all your advertising needs in the Midlands, in Columbia, South Carolina. All right. I, well, instead of, let me preface this question by saying your answer can't be Crohn's disease or cancer, or some god-awful deadly malady, all right? If you could put one day-to-day -day malady, you know, body malady on the hate napkin. Scurvy. Make it, scurvy is too, too high up the list. It's a deadly disease, right? One day-to-day -day thing. One day-to-day -day malady. If you could put it on the hate napkin and it would make it disappear forever, what would it be? We'll start with Carla. Paper cuts. Ooh. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. Forevermore, you would no, you could not even be, no matter what, you'd be impervious to the paper cut. I yep. like that. But just think of how death defying you could be with paper now. <laughs> they piss me off. Paper cuts piss me off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they make no sense. No. Yeah, no, I like that. Paper cuts. That's a good one. All right, G-Man, you got one? <laughs> uh, toe stubbing. Ooh. Ooh, forevermore, no matter what, <laughs> the toe stub. Yeah, toe let's, stub. Let's, get, let's get rid of that. All toes. Although, can you stub a toe other than a big? Is that possible? Oh, yeah. Certainly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, well, we've the, got folks the, speaking the, from experience. You can, you can break the small one and then just be, you know, malformed for the rest of your life. Right. Okay, so <laughs> toe stubbing and paper cuts. Gone forever. Polly from Bali? <laughs> Uh, HVP. Uh, <laughs> Human papillotavirus. Which HPV, I'm sure you're sorry, still... yeah, HPV. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, I didn't H... want to go back to, to Carla's favorite subject, but, you know, it would be nice to not have those extra things on there. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why we made him the sound producer and, and usually is... stuff in behind uh, curtains. Oh, don't forget regalprints.com, guys. If you guys... <laughs> They do a great job. I think I've, I've got so many. I don't know where to start here, but I've got, a, I think I'll go with, again, on the toes, the ingrown toenail. And I have a mm. condition where all 10 of my toes have ingrowns on both sides. 
it's 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 like it's some sort of Spanish Inquisition malady. I so about every two weeks I gotta I gotta get, you know, I got these like um, heavy duty nail clippers. I mean, people are like you should go to the. Do I'm not gonna spend two hours at the doctor every two weeks. I'm gonna take care of this on my own, but it is painful. But I mean, it's like having Wolverine claws digging into your toes. If could I could you, go the rest of my life. Could you imagine going to medical school for eight years <laughs> and, and be making 150000 maybe $300,000 a year, and then and your day had to deal with Eric coming in with his ingrown toenail, and this is like what you had to do before lunch. <laughs> now I understand why the suicide rate among doctors is so high. <laughs> no, listen, if I was the doctor, I'd be like, well, hell, we're gonna, I mean, if I'm going to do this, we're going to make some incisions. <laughs> oh, I just rip them all off. Yeah, I, I one at a time they go. Oh, if you could just remove my toe, put me down and remove my toenails. That was it. I, I, I'm all for that. I'm all. I put you that. down I mean, all the time. <laughs> 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 all right. So we got where we got we got rid of uh, HPV. <laughs> <laughs> Stubbing of the toe, paper cuts, and ingrown toenails, ladies and gentlemen. And we don't like cheese dust this week. Uh, we we don't we can't stand it when you go out with your friends and they conveniently forget their wallet or their purse at home. Uh, we we had a, a lively debate on the snooze button, um, snooze or booze. Um, I think we might have time for one more thing. Car <laughs> Carla, go for it. Carla, end us. Send us out. Send us out, Carla. Okay, when um, somebody asks, a younger person will ask my opinion on something. And I usually try to be as middle of the road as I can. And their answer is always, okay, boomer. Oh. And I'm like, okay. Okay, look, I confess, I am a baby boomer, okay? I agree, my generation screwed the pooch for all y'all. Okay, because we had it all and screwed it up. But I am not a get off my lawn boomer. And it's kind of, um, it kind of feels like a slur. It's dismissive. And anybody who knows me knows that I will not be dismissed. <laughs> no, 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 no. How do you, so, well, yeah. Not, I mean, how do you, Maybe they're just comparing you to Boomer Esiason, the Jets quarterback, and, it's, and you're just taking it the wrong way. Well, I no, was going to say, no. from, a, from the perspective of three white middle-aged Gen Xers, okay, Boomer. <laughs> so there's no way to... Do that one more time and I'll show my chest, big boy. <laughs> this isn't... The, the, I, I, have a, I have a question. As, uh, these aren't these aren't family members that are saying that to you. These are complete strangers, correct? No, no, because I've been hanging out with Jenny and Susan too long, and I don't have any more family members. To talk to like that. <laughs> Thanksgiving at the Dairy Queen. <laughs> well, let's just say there are more empty seats at my Thanksgiving table than there used to be, and nobody knows where the bodies are buried. <laughs> oh, that, that harkens back to last episode. <laughs> oh, the sociopath, how we love him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've come to another, the end of another glorious episode of hate. Um, so much so that Garrett is totally divested of hate. Um, Brain. We actually, we, uh, Carla from Burnt Core saved the day again with her list. And I'm your uh, humble, <laughs> uh, sober co-host, Eric Bjorn. Again, <laughs> join us next week. See you next Tuesday for another intrepid episode of the Hate Napkin.